Hey there, this is Ian Perry, Solutions Specialist at CanDrone, and today I'm continuing on our video series for processing the data from a Mavic 3 Enterprise and the MLED Reach RS2. We're going to make an ortho map and a DSM of Fort Langley Farm. And so in the last video, we went through importing our ground control points and adding in orthometric heights. And we're going to now go into PIX4D and start to build our ortho and our digital surface model. So I open up a new session of PIX4D Mapper and I'm going to name this uh, something like Fort Langley Farm. And I'm going to put it into the folder that I created to keep track of all of our work with this project. Now as I add the images, I simply go into the DJI folder and highlight each of them. Make sure that they're all here, that looks right, and I proceed to the next step. Now this is important. We want to make sure that all of the images were geolocated. It seems that they were, and that the coordinate reference system picked up is WGS84. That sounds right and we proceed on to the next step. This is asking us what coordinate reference system we would like to output. I'm happy here to stick with WGS84, but we'll project onto UTM Zone 10 North. Now we have a couple of ready-made uh, processing packages for us here. I'm going to choose 3D maps. If I was in the field and I was going to do a quick run through to QA the data, I might use one of these options like rapid low res and that would crank this through with less detail but with much less time required. But since I'm working off of one of our big desktop computers here and, and remoting in with this laptop, I'm going to choose 3D maps and I'm going to press finish. I'm not going to start to process because I am going to just take a look at a few other things. So I can see my area of interest is shown in this map view. Now I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to go to processing options. I'm going to uncheck these second two. I'm going to keep the first one for now. Now I'm pretty happy with most of the defaults in this menu. If you had some more challenging lighting conditions or you weren't able to achieve uh, as much overlap as you might have liked, you might want to come in and change a few of these options. But we were flying quite ideal conditions. We had 70% uh, side lap and 80% forward lap, which is the minimum for those uh, photogrammetry missions. And we also had RTK fix the entire time. So I do expect to have good quality images here. Now I like to set the resources down uh, a, a few notches so that I can continue to do other things in the background while my uh, CPU is processing this ortho and DSM. I'm happy with that. I'm going to start to process. So once that initial processing step is complete, what you're left with on the screen is a look at your area of interest in what's known as a sparse point cloud. Now if I turn off the cameras and go up to this trackball navigation, I get a good look at my area of interest. Now this is the point at which we want to add in our MLID rover points. Now because I had an RTK fix, I'm not going to use them as 3D ground control points and factor them into the rendering of this model, but rather I'm going to use them as checkpoints. So we'll have a completely independent check of the accuracies that we got from our Mavic 3E. So in this toolbar, we'll head up to this little crosshair icon, GCP Manager. And this is where we're going to import our points. So what I'm going to do for now is close this down and go into my folder where my GCPs live. And I'm going to actually make a copy of this. I'm going to save it in the very same place, but I'm just going to call it simple. Make sure it's in that folder. 
Now once I've made a copy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out everything except the first four columns. All of this other data is excessive for the purposes of importing checkpoints into PIX4D. I click Import GCPs in the top right hand corner. So once I'm happy that this has imported properly, I'm going to go down to the left and go into Ray Cloud Editor. And when I go into my left hand column, I choose GCPs and I click on GCP1 and automatically what happens, a photo set pops up with a bunch of estimated locations of these GCPs. So my job now as the analyst is to mark and confirm the markings uh, of those GCPs on this photo set. And as I click into more photos, the center point of that ground control point, you'll see that the marking changes on other photos. And as I see there's a green cross, that means that the software is starting to predict the location of the ground control point on other photos. Now, once I'm happy with this, I would press apply. And I can see that over in the left hand column under GCP1, that the software has automatically tagged 14 photographs with my coordinates. So I go to the next one and I continue the process, clicking on three to four initially and then automatically marking the rest. It's, again, it's very important that you pay attention to the type of GCP up here in the top right. And as I said, I don't want to use these markers to uh, improve the construction of this model. I simply want to use them to check how well the Mavic and its RTK module work. So I'm going to make sure that I assign them as checkpoints before I apply the markings. All right, now with all of my GCPs having been uh, tagged in the photos where they are uh, appearing, I'm going to re-optimize. Looking down here at my processing ribbon, I'm going to check the DSM and orthomosaic option, but I'm not going to produce the dense point cloud and the mesh this time. So in this video, we imported our DJI Mavic 3 photo set and our MLID GCPs into PIX4D. We ran an initial process and then tagged those GCPs in the photos. And we re-optimized and we ran the initial process and the DSM and orthomosaic creation process in order to get our deliverables. Stay tuned for the next video where we're going to bring our data into QGIS to create a map. If you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content. If you have questions about this process or any others, feel free to reach out to us. We'd be happy to help.